Welcome to GBRI's Lead AP Exam Prep course, and congratulations on your decision to pursue the Lead AP credential. On both a national and a global scale, there is a huge need for qualified sustainability and green building professionals. The green building industry is expected to grow significantly in the coming years. One study from Booz Allen Hamilton predicts that the industry will support almost 8 million jobs and represent over $500 billion in the U.S. economy by 2013. Becoming a LEED AP will position you to meet the needs of this expanding market and allow you to stay current with the latest green building developments. In order to better assist you as you prepare for the LEED AP exam, we've prepared this roadmap to guide you through the studying process. We understand that not everyone learns in the same way, so while we propose this guide, we also encourage you to find a path of study that works for you. The following slides will give you a week-by-week -week overview of our recommended path. GVCI exam questions are developed and validated by a global network of subject matter experts. The questions assess the candidate's knowledge at three different levels. Recall questions. These questions test your direct knowledge of the credits in the rating system, as well as your ability to recall facts and concepts. Think of these as more memorization questions. Application questions. These evaluate the candidate's knowledge on procedures, steps, performance, troubleshooting, how things work, and their ability to apply a known sequence of actions in order to earn a particular credit. Think of these as the understanding questions. And finally, analysis questions. These questions test a candidate's reasoning and problem-solving abilities with regards to the lead rating system. The best way to prepare for these types of questions is to make sure you have a fluid knowledge of the credits and solutions mentioned in the first two question categories. The questions will follow consistent formats. Candidates will never see true-false questions or none of the above, all of the above answers. Credits are numbered and will have the full name written out on the exam, so there's no need to memorize credits by their number alone. Most of the acronyms used will be spelled out. However, it's never a bad idea to familiarize yourself with the acronyms and abbreviations that are used throughout the lead reference guide. Some questions may have multiple answers, but if this is the case, the test question will prompt the candidate to select multiple answers. Candidates may be required to perform simple calculations. You will be provided with a pen and paper at the testing center during the exam, and may also use the on-screen calculator that is a part of the exam program. We have developed a seven-week program or roadmap for you to follow that will allow you to earn LEAD AP exam eligibility through project experience, as well as enabling you to pass the test. First, make sure that you have access to the resources listed on this slide. The Candidate Handbook is available to download for free from GBCI's website and will walk you through the steps required to apply and prepare for your LEAD exam. The Reference Guide is the book which contains all of the LEAD credits, along with their descriptions and point values. This should be your primary resource when studying for the exam. All of GBRI's exam prep resources should be available to you through your on-demand account so that you may access them anytime from any computer. You may also want to print some resources, such as flashcards and the memorization aids provided, so that you can study on the go or when you are away from the computer. In the first week of study, you will attend the project kickoff meeting. To prep for this meeting, 
we recommend that you take some time to view the Green Buildings 201 series that is available in your on-demand account. This may be review material if you are already active in the green building industry, but it never hurts to have a refresher. After the meeting, you will be able to officially join the project through LEED Online. This is a critical step in earning LEED exam eligibility, so make it a priority. You can also take this opportunity to get to know the LEED Online environment. While this will not be covered on the exam, it will be helpful to be familiar with the system when you begin working on the project. In the second week, the team meeting will discuss the sustainable sites and water efficiency sections. In order to make best use of the meeting time with the instructor, it is a good idea to familiarize yourself with the credits in the section through the reference guide as well as the corresponding on-demand presentations. We recommend that you watch the on-demand presentation a second time after the project meeting, as this will help to solidify the concepts discussed. Once you are confident with your grasp of the materials, take the associated quizzes to assess how well the concepts have stuck. This will let you know if you are good to go or if there are other areas that you need to review before moving on. Week 3 will follow the same basic format as Week 2, but will focus on the Energy and Atmosphere section. This is the largest and most heavily weighted section in the reference guide, so it is a good idea to spend a little bit of extra time here. In week four, we will look at the materials and resources section. Just as in other weeks, you should read the relevant section in the reference guide and watch the on-demand presentation prior to the project meeting and review the presentation and complete the quiz after the meeting. This week, you will also receive your letter for exam eligibility, which is your ticket to apply to sit for the exam. Now that you're in the rhythm of studying, you'll be able to gauge when to best schedule your exam. You do not need to schedule the exam immediately upon being approved. However, having a date to work towards may help motivate you in your studies, depending on your specific learning style. Beginning in week five, project meetings will be exclusively on demand. You may continue to view on Thursdays if that works for your study routine or whenever works best for you. Instructors will still be available to answer your questions via email. This week includes three sections for study, as the innovation in design and regional priority sections are very short. Congratulations! By week six, you will have covered all of the information that you need for your LEAD exam and can begin reviewing more thoroughly. Once you are able to score at least 80% on the section quizzes, you can move on to the full mock exams. These will closely approximate the questions and setup that you will see on the real LEAD exam. Scoring 80% or higher on these practice tests is a good indication that you're ready for the real exam. In week seven, you will be making your final exam preparations. Review the support documents that you've downloaded and practice with your flashcards as much as possible to ensure quick recall at exam time. Make sure to review, but get a good night's sleep and relax your mind the day before the exam. A rested mind is a prepared mind. All right, now we'll give you an intro on our exam prep materials. The BDNC exam prep is divided into seven sections based on the lead categories. Each category has a representative icon that you'll see throughout the presentation. Please make sure that you complete the quizzes for each section before moving on to the next. Throughout 
throughout the course, we have provided icons that represent each credit intent, credit requirements, the implementation process, and documentation requirements. These icons will be used to designate credit calculations and the person who will be held responsible. A thumbs down sign indicates that there is no exemplary performance available for a credit, while a thumbs up will be used to identify how exemplary performance points may be earned. Throughout the presentation, you will see associated credits listed on the left-hand side of the credit being discussed. Once you are exposed to all the credits, try to anal analyze the relationships between these credits, how the interventions required to earn one may affect the implementation of another. You will also notice a timeline diagram that shows what project phase a particular credit should be implemented and documented along with the responsible party's name.